Hello, in this segment we're going to look at taking the drum brake off of, getting the brake drum off of a single spring uh, shoe type brake on an 05 Sierra. First thing you want to do is make sure, of course, that the emergency brake is off. And of course, if the emergency brake's on, you can see that I can't even rotate it. Now, there might be more than just the emergency brake holding this, but in this case, I set the emergency brake just to prove that I can't turn it at all. So I will release the emergency brake. And we can see at this point then after releasing it, I do have the ability to rotate it. But this is not the only reason that, that this could be held on, that it's not coming off. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Let's take a closer look here. One of the reasons is, is the brake drum itself is actually sandwiched in between of the rim and the flange for the axle inside of there. Of course, corrosion on this flange material that you see right here could uh, uh, happen on this, making the drum actually stick to the flange. The other reason is this axle, the stub of this axle right here is a centering device. This is what centers the brake drum onto the axle to re uh, reduce or to eliminate any radial run out. And then there's also a little bit of this flange sticking out that our rim itself actually slides over that. And that's what centers our rim, keeping our rim and our tire radially in tune with the center of our axle right here then also. So this surface right here can acquire a lot of rust. It could have some aluminum built up on it. This one you can see I've actually got some gold uh, never sees on this unit there then anytime I take my wheels off. I always stick a little bit on this flange because again that could inhibit this drum from coming on. Now this manufacturer also applied along with this a couple of push bolts. So with this, not the bolts, but the holes. And on this, these uh, pre-drilled holes that's in this drum assembly then are threaded. And out of that we do have the ability of pushing, putting a bolt in, making sure we have the proper thread. Anything nowadays is going to be metric in thread pitches and so on like that. And uh, with that we can of course push with that. Now. Again, one of the big things that could be holding this on is the rust around that flange. So how do we get this rust off of here then before we even attempt to pull this off? One way is to take a grinder, a die grinder, uh, with a wire wheel on the end of this guy, and go around the outside. cleaning the rust off of that so that whenever you pull this off you're not inhibited by the rust on it. If you can't get in there tight enough with the die grinder or don't have one, you could take a file. I'd like taking a half round one because it does give me a sharper edge on this and literally work that very lightly around this guy to get the rust off of this outer flange. Of course we don't want to take materials away because then there's nothing to center the wheel itself. Or you could take a piece of sandpaper, tear an end off of this guy, fold him over, and work a little bit around the outside of that, again, to get some of this material off of that flange that is on our axle so that we can pull our drum brake on off. Now, that's the corrosion problem, and with that, once we get that cleaned up, if it still seems um, stuck on there because it's rusted to the axle or so on and if you don't have these push bolts one way is to go in with a large three jaw puller and reach around the back side and pull that way using this as your sp uh, spot that you push off of. Another way as we know we never pry with a screwdriver is to go in between the backing plate and the drum and pry this direction there. Problems with that is you can actually bend the backing plate backwards and as we'll see a little bit later the shoes actually center themselves off the backing plate. So if you bend the backing plate then your shoe is going to sit crooked to the surface, the friction surface of the inside of our drum. Another thing that is possible is to take a punch and a hammer and literally work around the outside of this guy several times to break it loose and that always comes with some response out of that. Of course, if you're hitting on the axle, you're shoving sideways on the ball bearing inside of there or the tapered bearing, which 
good Burnell is, so don't hit too hard there. Then. So the ones with the push bolts are a fantastic way of getting them off there. Then. Now, of course, with the push bolts, we're going to get them in until they touch. And I just like using a palm ratchet. That way it works a little faster. Find a socket and start pushing just like this. Then with those push bolts going back and forth, maybe one turn. One turn would equal four turns on this because I'm only getting that quarter of a turn on him at a time. And of course pulling this off. Now, being I've come off of this, I've come off the flange, it's really gotten tight on me. Reasons being is on the inside of the drum that doesn't touch the shoes is actually now grabbed a hold of the shoes and is trying to lift the shoes off of the backing plate itself then. If there is enough wear in the drum that this ridge is too high, you won't be able to pull this off. And then what you're going to have to do is go into the back side through an access hole and literally back the adjuster off itself on there. With that, you can get a little bit of tension on there, but this one's getting a little tight on there. And we are coming even by watching these flanges. With it getting stuck like that again we should go in and literally back off the adjuster so let's go to the other side I've got it apart and we're going to look at the adjuster over there then to see uh, how it operates on this guy 